Europe at the beginning of the third millennium. A continent of bustling cities and high-tech industries. A continent of eight-lane motorways, high-speed trains, and places like this. The deep countryside of Transylvania in Romania. Transylvania is home to numerous small villages. This one is called Derja. The Terziu family have farmed here for generations. Claudio Terziu is 14. He lives here with his mother and father and his four brothers. They own a few cows, a pig, some chickens and a horse. Today a neighbor has dropped in. Their horse needs a new shoe. Life here is much like Western Europe in the 19th century. With almost no agricultural machinery, everything is done with primitive tools. Claudio's elder brother is sharpening a scythe which they use for cutting grass. The working day for Claudio and his brothers depends mostly on the seasons. Start when there's light in the sky. Stop when it gets dark. In summer, that can mean 16 hours at a stretch. Life in the countryside is difficult. You have to keep working all day long because much of what we produce is our own food. Like the bread my mother bakes and the milk, which we have to go and get from the sheep that graze on the hillsides around here. So there's never much time to relax. After all this work, the whole family managed to earn only four pounds a week, which has to pay for everything they need. It's why young people feel there's no future in the countryside. Claudio doesn't want to be like his dad. He's thinking of packing it all in and making the 50-kilometer journey to the nearest city, Cluj-Napoca. The idea of moving to Cluj has crossed my mind. To get myself a job, to have my own life, to have a family of my own, to make money so I can put food on my family's table. But country people discover that city life can be even tougher. Cluj-Napoca is the capital of Transylvania. About 380,000 people live here. Many have no money or home, and no one to turn to for help. The remainder survive through luck, corruption, smuggling, crime, and genuine hard work. Cora Silvestru was born here. She goes to a secondary school in the city. I'm 13, and I live in a block of flats with my mom and dad. There are many people in Cluj who are very poor compared with us. They can only afford to buy bad quality stuff in cheap Russian and second-hand shops. But I'm able to wear quite fashionable clothes, so I know I'm lucky. All the money in our home comes from my dad, who's a scientist. Emil Silvestro is a geologist, and he spent much of his life working at the University of Cluj. Emil remembers the time just over 10 years ago when Romania had reached the point of being almost completely destroyed. Its industry, its environment, its housing, and its agriculture. The destruction was caused by one of the worst dictatorships Europe has ever known. It was led by a man called Nicolae Ceausescu, a communist. Many people thought he was completely mad. We mustn't forget that one of the first things the communists did was to send the educated people of Romania to prison camps in an attempt to kill them all. Once they'd got rid of the educated people from the top, it was much easier to crush those underneath. They did this because they wanted to control everything without opposition, and it caused immense damage to the Romanian nation. After a generation of abuse, the people decided they had suffered enough. 
a revolution began. Ordinary citizens against the secret police and the army. There's a Romanian saying, the knife blade has reached the bone. It couldn't go deeper. And the explosion of the people matched the years of built up pain. I had a very good friend who was among the first to die in the central square of Cluj. It was a victory for the Romanian people. Ceausescu, the dictator, was arrested and shot on Christmas Day, 1989. Ceausescu left everything in such a mess, it's taking an age to put things right. Tens of thousands in the city are unemployed. Many have no income whatsoever. Compared with life in the United Kingdom, the majority of people in Cluj are living on the edge of survival. And most of them live here, in this overcrowded high-rise neighborhood built during the communist era. Unlike most countries, where at some stage, farm workers moved from the countryside to the cities of their own free will, in Romania, People were physically removed from their homes in the rural areas and forced to start a new life in the city. This district, Manashtur, is home to 110,000 people. Originally, this area was a village known for its vegetables, but the communist state destroyed the farms with bulldozers and built this monstrosity to house the new workers in a massive communist industrial machine. This is the Klujana shoe factory. 7,000 people worked here, but today the company is virtually closed. Mr. Carlos was the third generation of his family to work in the factory. He has a treasured possession, a video about Klujana. It reminds him of the 28 years he spent at the factory, making shoes for Russia, the USA, Germany, France, and the United Kingdom. When the communist system collapsed just over 10 years ago, and Romania suddenly found itself having to compete with much more modern industries in Western Europe, factories like this didn't really stand a chance. They had to close, throwing large numbers of people out of work. Factory after factory shut their doors forever. Their decaying remains are creating what has been described as the rust belt of Europe. Nowadays, the majority of people in Cluj don't have a proper job. My wife and I are both unemployed, and the cost of living is very high. We don't even have the money to buy fresh food, let alone school books, for our son. But our parents are dead, so there's nobody to help us. Absolutely nobody. For many, the only solution has been to start a private business of their own. Daniel Roshka is one of the many who came from the countryside to work in industry. He spent his working life as an electrician in a state-owned factory. But he could see the writing on the wall. He left before it shut down and set up a small car repair business with his son. They operate in the front drive and garage of their own home. The most common vehicle in Romania is the Dacia which people have a particular knack of repairing when things go wrong, as they frequently do. Here in Romania, people can't afford a new car every year or so because our economy isn't that developed. Most people have to fix their own cars to keep them running. So I thought I'd build a small car repair workshop. I did this to increase our income and have a better life. We've seen on television how hard work has brought a better life for other countries. So we want to follow in their path of democracy. Gradually, despite many ups and downs, some Romanian city dwellers are beginning to enjoy a better quality of life. There are things in the shops that Mr. Silvestru only dreamt of 10 years ago. Cora and her friends are off the Benetton. For most Romanians, shopping for clothes isn't a common everyday thing. Most girls like shopping, so I often go with my friends to see what's new. But the 
problem is that anything fashionable is really expensive in Romania. It can cost several months' wages just for a dress for a party. We have to save for a long time to afford the clothes we like. So buying them's a real treat. As the gap between rich and poor widens, some extraordinary sights are beginning to appear in the streets. The difference between the old and the new gets bigger and bigger. Even the basics of everyday life have been almost completely neglected. The roads, for instance, are in a terrible state. Money from the European Union is helping to patch them up. The Cluj water supply is also getting special attention. The city receives its water through leaky, rusty pipes. Many were installed more than a hundred years ago. Everything you see here, old water pipes, pumps, electric motors, tanks, are pieces of the Cluj water supply system. This new pipe is part of a 27 million pound investment by the European Union. It brings water from the reservoir to a new treatment facility, which will deliver decent water to the population. With cities like Cluj taking a long time to get back on their feet, it may well be that one of Romania's best hopes for the immediate future lies in quite a different place, the countryside. Romania's range of scenery is striking. The sort of stuff that would stand out in any holiday brochure. Like here in the Carpathian Mountains, where bears and wolves still live. There are areas of the country that have stayed truly wild. Even more important, perhaps, the Romanian countryside really is, by European standards, untouched, above and below ground. With tourism still rated as one of Europe's fastest growing industries, this countryside is something that Romania could easily sell as a totally new tourist experience. Indeed, it's already started. Many Romanian villages like this one, Albac, have been twinned with others in Western Europe. And tourism development money is coming from the European Union to help publicize the region and put up new signs. Mircea was an engineer in the city, but now he sees a bigger opportunity here in the mountains by offering his services as a guide and opening accommodation for visiting tourists. He received a grant of 300 pounds to get things going. It may seem a small amount, but in Romania, it's a whole year's wages. A few years ago, this was a stable. Over there were the animals, and this was the hayloft. We tried to use local products like wood. The furniture and cupboards are made by local craftspeople. The woolen blankets are made by women from this area too. Even these traditional wooden flower vases are made by local artisans. Everything was made as much as possible from local materials. Tourism has a big multiplier effect. One job always leads to another. This is benefiting people in the Romanian countryside where, unlike in Western Europe, the old skills survived. Using local materials, wood carvers and weavers are being encouraged to sell their traditional products as souvenirs. Slowly, the locals are getting a boost from this new rural industry. And this is the first ski lift to be installed in the region. There's guaranteed snow every year and still plenty of space on the uncrowded slopes. So what do these French tourists think of this as a holiday destination? The landscapes are terrific and we just love the mountains. Everything remains very, very traditional. Houses, the art, transportation, like the use of the horse. It's so close to nature. But it's highly likely that rural revival will go beyond the development of tourism and traditional skills and even reach people like the Terziu family. A boost to agriculture itself is on the cards since the European Union set aside two billion pounds for rural development up to the year 2007. The plan is to rebuild farming villages like Derja, 
and upgrade their communications. Da, bine. O să transmit. For example, the Romanian phone system is chaotic. If an order arrives for Mr. Terziu to supply some corn, the message has to be phoned to a friend in a nearby village. He then delivers the message by foot the rest of the way. Also, farming is on such a small scale it's difficult to make a profit. Yet, it's an extraordinary fact that in a Europe where farms are closing down all over the place, the potential here in Romania is massive. The country possesses first-class fertile farmland which was once known as the wheat basket of Europe. Investment could bring new tools and, above all, tractors and trucks. This horse-drawn car will take five hours to reach the nearest market. The solution is very simple. With rural investment, Romania can become Europe's wheat basket all over again. Gradually, the unemployed are returning to where they belong, the countryside, to start working the land again. Hopefully, in the future, enough food can be produced to benefit everyone in Romania. This all sounds sensible enough. Yet, back in the cities, there are forces that may be preventing it from happening at all. The media. After years of censorship, Romania's knowledge of the outside world is growing day by day. And now, there's a new, even more powerful force in the media. The Internet. At almost no cost to the user, the very latest on the glitz of Los Angeles, London, Berlin hits you straight between the eyes. Romanians have always been curious and inquisitive. So, when something cheap but powerful comes along, they take advantage of it. People are starting to make comparisons and changing the way they think. This instant window on the world is making people think seriously about what is wrong with Romania. Like, for example, the fact that not a single penny of the two billion from the European Union for Rural Development has yet reached the countryside. A recent poll showed that four out of five Romanians are unhappy about the way they live. In the last 10 years, 400,000 have left and gone abroad, mainly to Germany, the United States and Canada. If for some reason I had to live in the countryside, I wouldn't be happy at all. I'm not going to live the rest of my life in Romania. My father wants us to emigrate to Canada, to have a better future there. Here in Romania, there's no future for us. Our leaders have not helped us, the people. They have not helped our country to develop, to become nicer and stronger and richer. Because Romania is rich in natural resources, which many people here don't know how to use properly. Yet the resources of the countryside could well be the way forward for Romania. But will there be enough people left to push through the plans for rural revival? Thank you.